Hey watercolor wizards, Hajra here. Today we'll be painting an adorable monarch caterpillar in watercolors as part of my work on an original series of miniature paintings for exhibition. Thanks for parking your brushes here and let the magical art adventures begin. I'm sharing a shorter version of this demo publicly on YouTube that'll still have a decent amount of information, but if you're a $7 patron, then you're watching an in-depth, leisurely, almost real-time version with lots more information and instruction. And remember, $7 patrons get all my new longer private YouTube videos, free passes to my six previous Skillshare videos, along with many other info-dense, deconstructed art and Q&A posts, video notes, and sketch downloads. To get an idea of what I post, you can always check out my constantly updated public index of all my Patreon posts divided by category, and with free public post links labeled for easy perusal by all. As far as supplies go, for this project I used an HB pencil and soft eraser to draw my caterpillar sketch on thin sketch paper first where I can erase and correct without worrying about damaging my watercolor paper. For brushes I used a synthetic number no. 6 wedge or triangle brush just because I bought one to demo in the past and had it around, but any round brush with a fine point will work. I also had a quadruple zero spotter brush for teeny tiny details as needed, but I never ended up using it as the tip on my other brush was fine enough to do all those teeny details. And I also had a 1 8 inch filbert for blending and softening edges. And you can replace this with a flat brush or an angle brush or another round brush if you want. I had out my Albert Durer Faber-Castell watercolor pencils, which I use mostly like wet paint from a palette. So you can just use conventional pan or tube watercolors as you like. The colors I used here were cadmium yellow, cadmium orange, and phthalo blue mixed with Payne's gray to get a bluish black. I transferred my finished sketch to my Arches Cold Press 140 pound watercolor paper, and now it's time to paint. My sketch transfer and freehand drawing process are not covered here, but all that's available for free on YouTube and some of my other videos. I started with drawing in the yellow areas dry with a cadmium yellow watercolor pencil, and you can watch my other watercolor pencil videos to see seven ways that I use watercolor pencils, including this dry method. And I only use the pencils dry in the very beginning with this yellow, I'm actually going to end up using the pencils wet from a palette like conventional paint for the rest of the piece. And you can just do that by breaking off bits of the watercolor pencil and putting it in a palette and then just wetting it so it turns into paint right in your palette. I was really drawn to the dynamic energetic pose of the caterpillar here and I went through a lot of different reference photos before I found this one on Wikipedia by photographer Will Brown and it really stood out to me and I knew this was a reference I was going to go with as soon as I saw it. I actually flipped it to face the other way because it suits the final piece that I'm painting better because the layout of the other butterfly miniatures that I'm going to be adding around this caterpillar in the future will be affected directly by his pose and his stance and direction. And you can see a horizontal and a vertical pencil line in the background it's there to show me the center of my watercolor paper so I could best figure out how I wanted to place the caterpillar for balance when I was sketching him. It turned out he looked best to me with more than half of him toward the right side of the paper and less of him over to the left side so he's not exactly centered. The upright standing part of him looks more impactful and dynamic so I pushed it more toward the right and now it's falling about one third of the way across the whole paper and that's a good place for any focal point. One third boundaries are in alignment with the golden mean so that doesn't necessarily have to happen for every piece. It typically doesn't work for really long or really narrow pieces but for a piece that's a fatter rectangle or square like this one, the one third boundary works just fine so you can put your focal points at a one third placement. After the yellow I put on was dry, I wet it with a damp brush to activate the paint and that'll make it look like real watercolor paint. I'm using the backside of Arsh's cold press 140 pound paper here so it gets a bit less textural and that's good, that's what I want. I don't want the paper to be holding a huge amount of texture. And this is basically like wet on dry. Here the yellow paint is separate from the water and it's all in the paper already and then I wet it but it's still basically wet on dry. Just don't use too much water when you go to wet a pencil that you have put on the paper unless you want that color to dilute a lot or lift a lot of that color. If you just add a little bit of water, then you'll just saturate and deepen the color and turn it into paint. But if you use too much water, you're going to end up just diluting it all down to a glaze. And now I'm going to do the rest of the piece with just getting my paint mixes for my palette directly. So no more coloring on this with dry pencil. And don't make the black bands too thick either. This is, thank God, a healthy monarch caterpillar and we want to paint him that way. A monarch caterpillar where the black bands are wider and thicker is probably sick and will probably die soon. It's called the black death for these types of caterpillars and it's caused by either a specific bacteria 
or a specific virus, and one of the visual signs is that the caterpillar turns more and more black. So let's not do that to our adorable, healthy, fuzzy-wuzzy friend here that I'm painting, and we're going to make sure he has narrower black stripes and more of that yellow and white showing. So this adorable fellow is the pupa or caterpillar of the monarch butterfly, Danuus plexippus, a milkweed butterfly in the subfamily Danionae in the family Nymphalidae. Other common names, depending on region, include milkweed, because the caterpillars only eat milkweed plants, or the common tiger, wanderer, and black-veined brown. This is probably the most familiar North American butterfly, and it's an iconic pollinator. Adults have those signature distinctive black, orange, and white wing patterns with a wingspan of about 4 inches. The viceroy butterfly mimics a color and pattern similar to the monarch butterfly, but it's significantly smaller and also has an extra black bar stripe across each of its hind wings. And the monarch butterflies and the viceroy butterfly is aposomatic, which means that it's warding off predators with a bright display of contrasting colors that signal nasty taste and or poisonous characteristics. Also, the monarch caterpillar, as we can see from the study, looks kind of like a Twinkie or a fondant wrapped dessert, so he's really quite adorable. While the viceroy caterpillar, not so much. He actually looks kind of freaky. And it's not his fault. I'm sure his mom loves him, but he's a scary looking dude. And this monarch caterpillar really isn't scary from any angle. He can turn over and his underside and legs and belly are still super cute and tidy. So he's not like a millipede or a centipede or a roach or a pill bug. You know, all those bugs that already look gross and scary when they're like the top side of them and then they're even uglier flipped over. So I think I really like this particular insect a lot just because of how adorable it is because I'm not really a bug person. So this caterpillar, by being just cute as a button and photogenic from all angles, is just really amazing to me. He grows in five instar phases before sewing himself into a chrysalis. The stage that we're painting it is either the second part of the instar or phase four or instar five as he's quite plump and large and I think pretty close to just being a fully grown up caterpillar stage. And it's a good thing he eats milkweed to make him nauseous tasting for protection because I have to say if I was a bird that looks pretty yummy to me. Viceroy butterflies as I mentioned earlier mimic the look of a monarch and in this case it's actually a case of honest mimicry which I think is called malarian mimicry since recently it's been found out that the viceroy butterfly also tastes absolutely disgusting like the monarch so the black and orange in both the monarch and viceroy adult butterflies is an honest warning. So it's not a fake out like Batesian mimicry for either one of these butterflies. If you want to attract butterflies that will lay eggs that will turn into these precious little caterpillars and then into majestic monarch butterflies, then plant some milkweed plants as this is what the larvae, these monarch caterpillars, solely eat. And yeah, it's a picky eater, but it gives them protection to taste nasty to many predators. And that lasts into their adulthood. It's a really good security measure. And you can plant many other flowers with nectar that will attract adult monarch butterflies and other pollinators as well because the adult monarch butterflies don't eat milkweed leaves anymore, obviously. They don't have the teeth to do that. They have that long proboscis that is just capable of drinking nectar and not eating anything else. They can only slurp. So do what you can to help. Monarchs have seen an 86% decline in their populations in California alone. And the monarch butterfly occurs globally, but the subspecies that inhabits North America, Danuus plexippus plexippus, is in great danger. This includes both of the two main populations in North America, the larger eastern population and the smaller western population. California is actually a very important location as a breeding and wintering stopover for monarch butterflies. A single butterfly can travel 3,000 miles as it has various generations in a single year make their journey across the continent. So if you're in California, visit the California Department of Fish and Wildlife website to see what you can do and plant to help these amazing creatures. Well, wizards, I hope you enjoyed painting this colorful, chubby monarch caterpillar with me in watercolor. If you're watching the shorter version, it's the public one on YouTube. If you're watching the almost real-time version, then you're a $7 patron with access to the full leisurely demo with lots more info and instruction for this project via a private YouTube video link on my Patreon. So please like, comment, and check out my website dashboard for easy access to all my online platform links on a single page to support my art creation and instruction. Thanks for perking your brushes here and wishing you all magical art adventures.